It's the final four games in the AIA Singapore Premier League before we head into the international break. And the headliner of the weekend did not disappoint as the Cheetahs approved their worth against the Stags. Vice Tommy Yukidoi, only one outcome there! The Sailors make it six in a row after a feisty showing against the Young Lions. Brilliant free kick from Shadat Suleiman. And while the Jaguars and the Tigers played out a stalemate, it was business as usual for the White Swans. All the action from Match Day 11 coming right up on the SPL Show. how we are already 11 match days in week by week the battle for the elusive AIA Singapore Premier League title just gets more intense well hi guys welcome back to the SPL show let's get cracking shall we this week's featured match came right here at our Tampanese hub between Tampanese Rovers and Haugang United the Stags came into this one on the back of five unbeaten run and had lost at home just once in 16 games since August 2019. Coincidentally, that came at the hands of the Cheetahs. Good afternoon everybody and welcome to what we hope will be a smashing sunset Saturday football night as the Stags of Tampanese Rovers welcome the Cheetahs of Haugang United. Something that was special seems to happen when these two clash in the AIA Singapore Premier League. Medovic out wide to Armin Bosniak who sticks to that left hand side like glue and is always good value to get a decent cross in. Armin Bosniak and he does get the cross. Yasser Hanapi! Another assist for Armin Bosniak and Yasser Hanapi is back in the scoring style. Six for the season and the Stags get the breakthrough in the 12th minute. And how many times have we seen that at our Tampanese up this season? Armin down the left, and the next thing you see, the ball in the back of the net. Shavalamwa, Tommy Ukidoi, what a save, Shazwan and Drakino! They've leveled it up on the stroke of half time, and Tampanese will be kicking themselves. Well, forget about twists and turns in the second half. We've got it right at the end of this first half here. Just as they move it through the middle, you have a look at that beautiful diagonal ball. And they've got bodies in there. Nazrul Nazari making up for a few issues defensively with a crucial equaliser for Haugang United. Oh, Cheryl Amwar's latched onto this brilliantly. Finds Tommy Ukinoi, only one outcome there! And Tommy Ukinoi has given Haugang a deserved lead and they've turned this game round. Inside six minutes of football, 60 seconds at the end of the first half and five minutes at the start of the second. Shawan Amwar take a bow and Tommy Yukidoi latches onto it for goal number 14. Manu back on the right-hand side, back to Nakamura. Plenty of numbers in the middle for Tampanese Rovers here if they can find the cross. Manu Bahana back to Nakamura. Straight at Ribwan who parries it clear, only as far as Shasa Hanapi. Nakamura, now Mamedovic. Armin Bosniak might decide to strike this Bosniak. Oh, tipped over. And apparently Torfik will be coming on. So the 11 that are out there only got a couple of seconds left to try and change this round. So the changes that are coming, I'm being told, they've introduced Erwan Shah shortly, but they might be coming on with the team. 3-1 down. What a save that is. The rebound that will be knocked in. And it's Raki scores again. He celebrates his national team call-up. With Haugang's third of the afternoon, they scored twice in five minutes. Three in ten when you take into account the goal at the end of the first half. And those changes that have to come now and not just come, Roshan, they'll have to turn this game on its head. It's Stags one, Cheetahs three. Nakamura driving through the middle, looking for an option ahead of him. He'll find Armin Bosniak now. One, two, three black shirts in the middle. Can Armin find one of them? Armin Bosniak to the byline. Armin gets the cross and it's a beauty and they're back in it. And it's big, bad Boris Kapinovic. Yeah, it seems so easy, doesn't it? Every ball out there, I mean, Bosniak is an opportunity to send a cross in there just to get it on the head of Boris Kapinovic again, lifts it into the six-yard area. 
and uh, Boris Grapitovic has got that physical advantage there. The shrugs off the challenge. But if there is going to be a draw, I fancy it'll be 4-4 or 5-5, not 3-3, the way this is going. Armin Bosniak into the area oh, again! Th Cast out penalty, surely! He's not given it! Well, I was like Rosh and I thought it was a penalty. Referee unmoved and I suppose maybe somewhat tellingly, there wasn't too much in the way of protest from the Stags players, but I'm like you, Roshan. My initial instinct was cast iron. Here's Fazrul. Oh, that's brilliant by Kaishu Yamazaki. Just have a look oh. at how he was chasing and harrying. Advantage being played. They'll come back and book Fazrul, I'd imagine, for sure. Shafiq, Tomiyuki Dai, we've been here before, six days ago. Tomiyuki Dai! This time, Shazwan just about keeps the Stags back in it. Well, I thought he was going to send it up the air, but he should have done. That's the final whistle. How gang do the double over Tampanese in a simply extraordinary game. They come from a goal down to level at half time, then take a 3 1 lead, and they withheld a ferocious Tampanese Rovers onslaught in the final moments. Yasser Henapi and Boris Kapinovic goals, not enough as the Stags depart for the Champions Leagues with all our best wishes, but the reality is, when they come back in 50 days' time to play the Lions City Sailors, they are going to be, you fancy, a long way off. Well, you cannot use the outcome to justify the process. Obviously, the, what you see is the tip of the iceberg. Uh, but what I saw was two teams playing with uh, very clear uh, principles, and credit to them, they, they took their chances when they had it. Um, for us, you know, it, it's a, again, we go back to our process, there are a few things that we didn't do so well and we got punished and we could have scored a few i felt uh, but again it's a it's a learning process and it's my job to get it done yeah the the the, the concentration was fantastic i mean the the determination the the mentality the attitude of each individual uh even my reserve who were shouting from the stands uh, encouraging the players so i i i mean this is this is something that um i feel very strongly is one of the most important things in team sports. What a crucial win for the Cheetahs as they leapfrog the Stags in the standings heading into the break. Now elsewhere at the Jalan Besar Stadium, another title contender in the form of the Lion City Sailors were looking to keep pace when they welcomed the Young Lions. The Sailors announced the appointment of AFC Champions League winner Kim Doohoon on a two-and-a-half-year deal, with the 50-year-old officially taking over from next month on. That meant the pressure was still on interim head coach Robin Chitraka to keep their winning streak going. While the Sailors have scored in their last 22 SPL outings, the Young Lions, who were looking for some redemption, have conceded in the last 25. It's a bright sunny afternoon here at Jalan Besar Stadium. The derby match today, Lion City Sailors take on Young Lions. Looking forward to this one in the Singapore Premier League with uh, second placed Lion City hoping to leapfrog Albrecht Nagata at least for 24 hours if they can beat bottom of the table Young Lions. Talking of which, there is Ilhan. Oh, that ball goes through. Joel Cho with the shot, and it's an important save from Hassan Sunny. And the first chance falls to Young Lions. Off the crossbar. And the goalkeeper was just watching. That header would have been quite a goal there for Diego Lopez. That's their best chance so far. Now, Diego Lopez, look at the pace he's shown. He's bearing down on the goal. Was there a foul? Oh, it's a red card. Was he the last defender? Well, Sharon Sazali decided the skipper he would stop Diego Lopez, and that's actually cost his side. Shadan, a brilliant free kick from Shadan Suleiman. An excellent goal from him, and finally, Lion City Sailors have got their goal. It's an excellent free kick from Shadan Suleiman. Quick pass forward from Diego Lopez, return to him from Steve Plaza, delightful ball across. And now can they finish off Heiko Pasha? Off the bo bottom of the post. It had beaten the goalkeeper. Gabriel Quack. Yeah. 
Song now, there's time for a shot. Oh, that's a decent save, isn't it? From Nur Shafiq. The shot was on. Well, they're not really offering much of an attacking threat at the moment, uh, Young Lions. They're quite happy to just clear their lines for the moment. Song's being given a red card. Oh, but then when he look at that again, he's gone flying in, studs showing. Yeah, that's not great. And I think the referee has got that oh, spot on. Adam Swande does well. Still with Adam Swande. Oh, that's a good save from North Shafik. It's still alive here, Stipe Plazibat. And that brings us to the end of uh, what's been uh, a functional win, shall we say, for Lion City Sailors. Three wins out of three. Shannon Suleiman, the only goal then that separates the two sides. The final score here at Jalan Basar Stadium. It's Lion City Sailors 1, Young Lions 0. Um, like I expected, uh, and I said it before, it's going to be a tough match. Every team that plays us, they're going to increase their intensity of the game and they're going to sit back like what exactly Young Lions did and it made it really difficult. Uh, I thought we created a couple of good chances to finish off the game, but uh, I mean, we were unfortunate to actually increase the scoreline. Very, very proud of my boys. You know, when we had 11, uh, we really gave them uh, a good game. Uh, despite that, going one man down, the boys worked very, very hard. And uh, yeah, we stayed alive in the game. Uh, but yes, we regrouped at halftime and said, you know, we, we've done so well. Uh, control the things that we can control because we can't control the match officials. Uh, the decisions that they make, we can't control. Uh, just go out there, uh, fight together. Um, yeah, continue to play, play a good brand of football. And I'm, I'm, I'm so happy, you know, uh, we still play our way out despite having one man less. Uh, yeah. That's six wins on a trot for the Sailors. Two more clashes to come after this little break. Before that though, let's hear from Tanjong Pagai United's Blake Ricciuto on what he's made of his time with the Jaguars so far. See you soon. There's more defending to do though. And the title winner with Brunei from 2019 is off the mark as a Jaguar. Since day one, since I arrived, the club has looked after me and everything, you know, coaching staff, players, everyone has been um, making me feel so welcome that, you know, I've been having a great time. Obviously, it was hard with losing a couple of games, but as I said prior, you know, we stuck together, you know, had the support from everyone and, um, you know, I got on the score sheet twice, but that's, you know, thanks to, to the players around me and to the coaching staff, you know, the boys getting the balls in the box and putting it on my foot. So, um, you know, very happy, you know. So, as I said, you know, my, my aim is, is not really to score as goals, if not just win games, you know, as a team. So, but, you know, happy to get on the score sheet twice, but um, yeah, we've got to just build from here. They could be in business here, long range, yeah. Jeff, but it's an absolute screamer! She crossed the six yard box, pulls it back, Lewis Jr. And there's the proper goal! They put it back instead to Norfolk Ilham. Comes to Blake, can he keep this in? Blake was the yeah. Yeah. It's been a while since we, we haven't won a game, but um, you know, post game, you know, everyone was quite happy, obviously, with the win, but not only with the win, but the way we played. Um, you know, we knew it was going to come sooner or later as our performances had been increasing slowly and we started to, to get an understanding of, of what is needed and is understanding each other, you know, on the field. And, um, and yeah, obviously everyone was quite happy with, with, um, with that win, you know, especially the players that were here last year that haven't had a win in a while, you know, it was good to get that monkey off our back. So yeah, very happy. That's one thing that I think is quite unique here at Tanjung Pagar is our is our um, camaraderie, our unity, you know, as a team. And I think we, we've had that throughout the whole season and it's just, everything is coming together. And that's from the top all the way down to the bottom players, coaching staff, board members, you know, we're just always sticking together and which is quite important, you know. That doesn't change because I feel like it's still in our own hands. It's a long season to go and I feel like we're building from now. So one of them will be to be champions 
If not, then obviously an AFC Cup spot or a Champions League spot is, is what, we're at, what we're actually aiming for and I think it will be a great um, achievement for, for, for Tanjung Paga after only being in the league back in the league for their second year. So, you know, that, that's where we're at. Welcome back. On Sunday, Balestia Khalsa were on a mission to put an end to their five-game losing streak. They travelled to the Jurong East Stadium to take on Tanjung Paga United, who have avoided defeat would exceed their entire points tally from 2020. So let's find out who came out tops in this one. We are at Jurong East Stadium this evening for the AIA Singapore Premier League match between Tanjung Paga United and Balistair Kelsa. Uh, Tanjung Paga have had one win all season long, beating Young Lions. And they're looking to try and beat their total number of points again last season. Both these teams in the bottom half of the table. Balistair Kelsa are the best of the rest. Here's Krychek. Flick on. In a good position. Was there a last touch perhaps? But Puvan Raj got something on it. Still Nishikawa, can he get across and he does. Now takes the shot from Idil. Well, that's a, one of their best chances, a good move. Nishiguchi, Nishiguchi still on the ball. Takes the shots and he drags it wide, but he did well. Here's Nishikawa. Nishiguchi, he rolls that in. Great work from the two Japanese players. Zyphon is furious with his defenders. It was through a sea of players. That confidence coursing through this team. Tanja Park at the moment. Nafal, that's a good ball in. Can he finish off? It's a delightful one, but it's just over from Rushaidi. Delightful ball from Nafal. Now 30 years of age, right, Hunt? Well, that's a great goal. Lovely knock on there. And that's how you lob a keeper. Lovely direct play. Ahmad Shahir gets the cross in. Oh, open header from Haswan. He's looking up for support. There's no one there. Krychek belatedly makes his way. Oh, wonderful bit of skill here. Zuzul. He goes down a little too easily. But what a bit of skill there. Now that could well be a yellow card. It should be a yellow card for right hunt. Rushaidi. Here is Ridwan. They're asking for handball. And they're going to get a penalty. Amir Hakim. A judge to have handled the ball. Well, that was quick, but it appeared to be an arm. And he does. Kyron Emery gives Tadjo Paga the lead here. His first goal for the club. And it's a hugely important one. Zuzul. Oh, he just crowded out. He top bounce it in. Oh, he's done so well there. Zuzul holding off the challenge of a number of Tanjung Paga players. And that is heartbreak for Tanjung Paga. They've just scored and they seemingly switched off. It's when you're at your most vulnerable. And I think that will be it. A hard fought game here. Plenty of entertainment in the second half, particularly. There was a late penalty for Kyra Lamry, but just a couple minutes later. Zuzul equalised and the full-time score here at the Jurangi Stadium is Tadja Paga United 2, Banister Kalsa 2. I think uh, we have to be really upset because that we, we, we played really well. And then at moments also, the goal considered is something that we have trained uh, to deal with and then we, we fail in doing so. So that is uh, something that we have to be disappointed about. Uh, anyway, good. Uh, it's good to see uh, Ridwan back and also Ambri scoring a goal, so that's the positive side of it. Yeah. Uh, meaning we 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 done it 
I think we played well, you know, only attacking third, I think we should, be, we should do better, you know, in a final, final touch and this one, final delivery was, uh, was, have some room for improvement, you know, but it's all around, it's okay, I'm happy, we are down and we come back showing a lot of character of the players, even last game, few minutes to go, they're still going all out and uh, very good character, players is excellent. You know. Now it's fair to say Geelong International haven't had the best of seasons. On the back of consecutive losses, the Eagles were still in search for their first clean sheet of 2021, having conceded in 14 straight SPL matches. And things weren't about to get any easier for Nur Ali's men as they welcomed the only unbeaten side so far, champions Albrecht Segata. Good afternoon everybody and welcome to our Tampanese sub for the final couple of matches this afternoon before the international break. We focus here at OTH for the Eagles and the White Swans. Albrecht Stigarta needing all three points to go back to the top of the table before the break after the Sailors win yesterday. Chiku, they're lining up here to take a shot back to Chiku! First shot on goal, that's on target. And Alberex make the breakthrough, and you have to say to an extent it has been coming. How many opportunities did Galang want to give Alberex in and around the edge of the box there? And Chiku had time to pick his spot and guide it masterfully past Wayne Chu. And Chiku's first of the season has given the White Swans the lead here at OTH early. It's another positive for Galang, I suppose. We haven't seen too much from Hashioka so far. We've seen plenty from this man, though. Nagasawa looking to pull the trigger. Could save Wayne Chu, but the rebound tapped and it won't count. The flag's up. It was Tanaguchi that latched onto the rebound, but the flag was up straight away from the assistant referee. I think Tanaguchi knows it as well. That reaction tells you all you need to know. So good work from the official over on that far side. And Gaylan can breathe a sigh of relief. Here's Ferdows. That's better. Moresh could be onside here. Moresh is onside. And this should be 1 1. And it is 1 1. It's taken them just over 30 seconds. And Albrecht the Garter have been stunned at OTH. Moresh with his eighth of the season. The flag stayed down. And the Brazilian made no mistake at all. You get the feeling you need to get two if they're going to win this game. It's a decent cross. Oh, look at the space. Good save. Hyrule, but look at the space that Yamashita had there, and they know that he's a set piece threat. Just ask the Lion City Sailors about him. Ito will be looking to add to his tally of one goal this season, which came on match day two in the 3 0 win against the Young Lions. Here's a free kick in a very dangerous piece of real estate. Tezuka. Oh, it's an absolute scorcher. Well, Galang. Always round the risk of giving away set pieces in that kind of territory that Alberex would take advantage. And Takahiro Tezuka has scored his third of the season, and it's a world class free kick. And as it stands, they're back to the top of the shop. Here's Hashioka. They get another goal here, Alberex. This game is done. Hashioka is he onside? Lovely touch, Hashioka. Good save, Hyrule. Wonderful touch from Hashioka to create the space. All he missing this season is a goal or well, one of the other eight green shirts in the area decent delivery but no green shirt near it the delivery was fine Elijah Lim and that's a suicidal pass and Albrecht will swarm forward now and those tired Galang legs better get back quickly they're not going to get back quickly enough to stop Suzuki I don't think Suzuki to wrap this up oh he's put it past the post well with a goal at his mercy Suzuki just maybe a tad too casual with the finish and with Hyrule throwing out with a spurring left hand, Suzuki couldn't get the shot away on target. As our referee has had a very good game, Abirami Naidu blows for full time. It's Albrecht Segata, the defending champions will take June off knowing they see the top of the summit of the AIA Singapore Premier League. It was a very tough match, so I'm satisfied with the result. So the players create created many opportunity and played, played exciting. I think what I'm pleased is with the effort of the boys, lah, you know, so of course the result is not going our way, you know, but I think what's important is the boys keep on working, lah, you know, but like I say, lah, you know, uh, there's a lot of things to work on and we just need to work on and just keep on improving. Lah. 
As we head into the break, it's the White Swans to sit at the top with 27 points, but not by the most comfortable of margins with the Sailors breathing down their necks by just a single point. Haogang United's win meanwhile moved them up into third on 23 points, with Tampines Rovers a further two points back. A huge gap between the top four and the remaining sides, Balestia Kalsa the best of the rest. Geelang International occupy fifth place while Tanjung Paga United and the Young Lions sit in the bottom two in seventh and eighth respectively. Well, SPL action returns on the 2nd of July and it'll take place at our Tampanese Hub where the Eagles and the Tigers go head to head. Both sides no doubt with plenty to work on during the break. And a huge one the following day on the 3rd will see champions Albrecht Zagata take centre stage. They welcome their nearest rival in the Sailors to the Jurong East Stadium. And with Tampanese Rovers away on the continental stage, it's just the three matches on match day 12, with the final one going down on the 4th of July at the Haugang Stadium between the Cheetahs and the Jaguars. That's another weekend of a scintillating football in the AIA Singapore Premier League. Well, you know the drill by now. It's time for me to go. So here are the top three goals from match day 11. See you same time, same place, one whole month later. See ya. Well, that's a great goal. Well, that's how you lob a keeper. Moresh is onside. It should be 1-1. One, one, and it is 1-1. One, one. And Albrecht the Garter have been stunned at OTH. Shadan, a brilliant free kick from Shadan Suleiman. Lion City Sailors have got their goal.